Welcome back to another amazing Adobe Live. I'm here today with the amazing Janet Liao. Hi, Janet. Thank you so much for being here with us. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm pretty excited for what we're going to create the next couple of days. So, yes, and I can joining. see. Yes, and we. I can see here in the chat, Janet, that we have so many amazing people. Cody Bear is there helping us to sharing all those amazing links. And I can see Peter Stevenson, Jessica Van Broen, Ariana, Valdery, how's it going? Nice to see you, mate. Mallory, Stefan, Peter Stevens, Shantan, Warola, Antonia, Alberto, what's up? So many amazing people in the chat. Amazing. So Steve Festus, ciao. I was telling to uh, I was saying to Janet before that we do a little Italian as well <laughs> here in the chat uh, while we practice those amazing apps. But let's get into it. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Claudia. I'm an Italian designer based in Manchester, UK, where I run my studio, Print My Soul. But today we are here with the amazing designer and illustrator uh, Janet. She's an independent. A graphic designer based in Brooklyn, New York. You can go and check out our website at janetliao.com. You can see it here on my desk. And uh, she has a fantastic body of work. As you can see, she focuses a lot on designing typography, pretty amazing. And also a very, very amazing uh, um, client list here. We can see some work she's done for Puma, work she's done for Adobe and also Nike. So make sure to go and check out our website because this full of amazing designs. And um, also don't forget to go and give her a follow on uh, Instagram. And uh, again, it's her name, Janet Liao. And you can explore all the amazing artwork that she has there. As you can see, she does a lot of mural and uh, also a lot of apparel, which I think that what we're gonna be focused on today, but uh, I'm gonna pass it to you, Janet, so you can tell us more about what we're gonna be creating today. Yeah, so um, I'm really excited for what we're going to be making the next couple of days. I'm sorry if I keep looking to the right side of my screen because I actually can't see what's going on on our screen right now, but that is that is totally fine. Um, so the next couple of days, um, I plan to basically start and finish um, a graphic apparel collection. Um, I work currently for Universal Music Group, and um, this is completely separate from that, um, but at the same time, just me personally as a designer, I love to draw um, uh, inspiration from just the emotion and um, just every the story behind uh, music and the artists that create it. And so um, the next couple of days, I'm going to work on um, a collection of pieces that just draw from Lauren Hill. Um, and, you yes, know, that's we're excited. <laughs> a, I mean, I'm I'm stoked because I just think like, the, the song that I chose um, is just so loaded and um, there's so much wisdom um, from that time that we can really bring into today, especially this week. So, you know, I'm especially grateful to everyone joining in um, from the States. I know we have a stressful potentially week ahead of us. And so I hope this is a space where um, we can just really focus in on the things that we have the power to control, which is kind of our own self-betterment and improvement and working on our own skills and stuff. So um, we've done the work. We've done a lot of work this week um, and this year um, uh, for what we believe is right in this country. And so maybe today and tomorrow, we just focus on um, taking care of ourselves and um, really drawing from the spirit of the words um, in her lyrics. So Janet, when I saw, I just was um, looking at your screen and I saw the song. There's actually a very, very important song also for my personal life. Oh, <laughs> it was actually the turning point when I when I started my my business. That song helped me a lot because wow. mm -hmm. it's not easy to, to be independent, as I'm sure you know. So that song is like 
backbone of my freelance career. So wow. I'm almost at a, a moment here. <laughs> wow. I feel like the stars like really align for us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so cool. And uh, before we get started, I'm sorry, I'm going to be interrupting you here and there because we have a wonderful community in the chat. Um, first of all, people are saying, Richard, you say nice website, Janet. Uh, I love it. I love the little um, pointer is that is the little black dot. That's so cool. But let us know in the chat where are tuning in from. As I said, Janet is in Brooklyn and I'm here in Manchester, UK. But let us know where are you tuning in from. I know Steve is from New Zealand if I remember well please tell me off if I don't and uh, Alberto is from Miami I can see RB what's up Biola Carol Perel so many amazing people Janet as I say all the time here at Adobe Live this is a safe space for anyone to ask questions about your freelance career um, of course Illustrator we're gonna go dive in into Illustrator on the iPad so feel free to ask any question you wish in order to learn more about the tools or maybe just the process. We are here to learn together. So please go ahead and, and put your questions in the chat. And if you are watching from YouTube, make sure to head on behance.net slash live because that's the chat that I can have a look at. So while Johnny keeps working, I can take note uh, of all the amazing questions. And don't forget that towards the end of the stream, we're going to also have the amazing artist spotlight. But I think we're ready to go. So pretty excited to see this project um, taking life. For sure. Thank you so much, Claudie. Um, should I just get started on sharing my screen or? Um, yes, please. I believe we're, we're already on your screen. And in the meantime, I can see. Can you see that I'm trying to see myself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. People know that we're here like from different places. I always look at one slide to see the chat on the other. So don't yeah. worry. Okay. Um, that's super, super cool. And I can see in the chat, we have amazing community from Florida, Ontario, the Netherlands, South Africa, Boston, Windsor, Birmingham, UK, Memphis, uh, Philly area, uh, Idaho. That's so super cool. I love this amazing international community. Quebec, Belgium, Brazil, wow. Stockholm, Sweden. Fantastic. Yeah, but yeah, we're, we are ready to jump into your screen cool. and uh, very excited to see you getting to work awesome okay there's a lot that we want to accomplish today and tomorrow so um i'll just get started by saying that i'm gonna start because i'm sure people would be curious what tools we're gonna be using and so i've been getting into um the illustrator for ipad which is such a i mean i feel like it's like what we've been asking for as people who love illustrator and basically live inside it so uh, my workflow is usually um, super fluid between using my iPad and um, going back to desktop to use Illustrator on desktop. And um, you'll see that I work much more quickly on Illustrator on desktop, but um, I'm, I'm definitely getting used to the interface on iPad um, because there's just something nice about being able to pick up a pen and just draw in the places that you've left blanks for. So you, you can see my, can you see my screen now? Um, my Illustrator. Yes. Okay, so there's going to be a lot to cover here. So um, I'm probably going to jump around a little bit um, as I, you know, explain what I'm doing and also um, what I'm inspired by and why I'm uh, creating what I'm creating. So um, to try to go in order, uh, first, I have prepared a couple of things before we get started because just this process tends to be such um, a thought intensive process. We want to really be like true to the artist and do a lot of research beforehand too. So we know that we're um, like riffing off of um, what's already been there, that it's good uh, and that people who are fans or that people who enjoy the lyrics um, can really feel like it's playing um, homage um, while um, also being something new. So I've done a bit of research first and this is what I usually start with, um, but I do include for um, the client as well. Um, I'm a big deck girl. I think decks are just the best. I think if you have a project, um, put in a deck, like just make sure you tell like the whole story um, so that people can see where you're coming from and what you're inspired by so that you kind of all start off on the same page. So this first page of the deck um, as much for my own reference as it is for the client's reference is 
um, just a bunch of images I found on the internet um, that I want to um, help like dictate the style um, that I want to go with, as well as reminding myself of um, certain uh, historical styles um, at the time so that we can be just cognizant of that and, and um, refer back to them uh, in like the appropriate way. So I don't want to go over all of these little images because we'll just kind of keep jumping back as we work and just kind of, you know, checking ourselves to see if um, it's still referencing them in the way and giving, giving like off the vibe that I want. Um, it's a good kind of check to just, you know, literally just go over here and be like, okay, does this feel like what this board, what I initially wanted everything to feel like feels like. So here we have some examples of, you can see like um, um, a Bob Marley, um, I believe this is like a, a tour poster. Um, this is when he, Bob Marley the Whalers. And um, I think that it's a interesting thing to reference because they have similar, um, similar belief system at some points. Um, and so they definitely um, reference that, um, you know, like Zionism and um, just kind of that whole vibe like is, is really similar. And I know that, um, you know, Lauren's music is, um, I would say inspired by um, like kind of what, what Bob Marley was doing. I think they were like distant related as well. I think he, he was like her, her uh, father-in-law, I want to say. Um, so super relevant. It's cool to pull in kind of like an adjacent um, reference like that. And of course, like some some like OG, like Lauren stuff. I didn't want to pull in too much of like the um, typical kind of 90s t-shirt thing. Because I think, I think that's, you know, that's done and it's really expected. And, um, you know, Urban Outfitters has that on lock. So we can, we can kind of just like... Uh, go completely the other direction is what I wanted to go with. Um, so I, I want to go away from like the typical, you know, 90s hip hop tee where we do like, you know, all the collaged photos with like the big text and kind of like cut out and stuff like that bootleg vibe. I think that's really cool. But um, today I want to go for something that's um, kind of delicate and I would say a little bit soulful, um, but still in a soft um, I was gonna say, Janet, sorry to interrupt you, but I was gonna say you just missing yeah. Erica Badu, and then my all my yeah. vinyl connection is there. <laughs> oh man, because I I do actually work on Bob Marley at work, and I think like that whole like if I went in that direction, we could go like really hard, you know, um, mm -hmm. into that whole like Rasta direction, and um, that would be like a different page of this deck. It would be like like uh, like mood number two like type of thing so i wanted to do something that i wouldn't typically be allowed to do so much um, and also i wanted to ask on the chat um who knows this music who knows these lyrics uh, who heard this song before so the the song was a piece of mine uh, yes. from lauren neal and uh, let us know in the chat if you know it if it's the first time if you never heard it before and why not since we're talking about music uh why don't you tell us what your favorite song is we never talked about this topic before at least during one of the streams that i've been here so let us know in the chat i always love to to know more about everyone that is here in chat so while we keep going and we submerge ourselves into this uh, amazing vibe and by the way let me just scroll back into the chat because uh, we had someone in the chat saying that they were loving the vibe of this deck so let me see if I can it was Brian Brian saying I'm vibing with this dope deck one Thank love <laughs> yes I think yeah I mean same I think like since this is I'm sure a lot of you can relate like when you do something for work that is like your passion it's it's amazing and yeah at the same time when you have the opportunity to do something with just like a little bit less constraints um you can really set yourself free and i think this is what i wanted to do with this this collection is like do a lot of things that i personally really like um but wouldn't be like the number one or number two most obvious things to do for someone like lauren hill um but yeah i i, I chose a song again because um it's it's not on like the the better known uh, album of hers. I think, she, you know, um, the miseducation of Lauren Hill was um, what people tend to associate with her, her prime or just like what, what got her known. Um, and we all know those songs. And I think like, I was thinking really hard about what we want to um, be feeling this week. I mean, it's not lost on me, you know, what, what's happening this week. So um, I wanted to 
really find something that um, was more raw and um, just something we could really draw emotion from and it was less um, manufactured. Um, Absolutely. Paloma Dora is saying that she remember when she cried at the end of the MTV live version of uh, yeah. that song. So It was so emotional. I got emotional actually just thinking about this and not to be you know, overly dramatic, but it is, if you ever just- You needed to like tell me, whole... you need to get ready for this. Like I'm like drinking water <laughs> to <show> myself. <laughs> I don't know. Feel free to it. stand up and pour yourself a glass of wine. Right? <laughs> actually, are you on the, are you on the West Coast? Or are you I'm, I mean, I mean, the, I mean, UK. So oh. I'm uh, extremely East Coast. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, what time is it over there? <laughs> so right here is, let me put it out. I have 5.45 p.m. So okay, we're already so, in the late afternoon. I mean, it's like I say, it's five o'clock yeah. somewhere. <laughs> five o'clock where you are. <laughs> yes. So if you want Should've to really get ready into this, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can still, it's not too late. You can still stand up and pour yourself Absolutely. And so many people here in the chat love um, Lori Neal. So it okay. looks like that we're all connected here, which is amazing. super, super amazing. Fantastic. Amazing. So, so. You know, I think I, I see somebody said, you know, to, to show the deck closer. I think so. This is like the bare bones. So I'll, I'll kind of walk through like my plan. So um, I this may be subject to change still I don't know if you guys know. Um, because this is kind of like the color palette I want to use. But as I drop in, you know, graphics and they have colors or lack of colors, like I'll probably um, change up the silhouettes or um, the color scheme, just kind of depending on how things go. I like to go with the flow, but um, the plan is to keep it, you know, cohesive with this, like, um, pretty, you have your basics, like very um, just viable, I guess, um, very merchandisable colors and also silhouettes, very easy. Um, and then just a couple of colors to kind of remind myself to um, keep some pop in there and maybe make some hero pieces, hero graphics that, um, will lay onto those pieces. So um, let's see. So this is the rough plan. You can, can you see my face right now? You can see like my, my room, We can right? see, yeah, we can see you or we can see your desk. So if you want to show anything, feel yes. free to put it, put it up so we can see it. So this is kind of how I start out with, um, there we go. Can you see this? with an initial really, really rough plan. Oh, that's so cool. Can you cool. see this? Okay. So yes, yes. Thank you so much for uh, for sharing it. I think it's so amazing when artists actually share the reality of the workflow. So um, that's super cool. So you actually yeah. just sketch it on just to have an idea. Yes, because I, I, I mean, I'm a pretty visual person. So I think like see, just seeing like, for instance, I knew I was going to start out with something like um, a typographically bold to kind of make sure that the song was really at the forefront and it's not just um, like fan merch. I think I really want like the lyric to be like what's driving the collection. So I knew I want to start out with, you know, a basic tee um, that carried that message. And then from there, you know, I had the, the rough idea to um, create derivatives of that hero image. Um, maybe in like smaller patches, like here is, I, I didn't draw this in, but I think I'm going to do like a left chest hit here to kind of like, like, how am I going to cohesively tie in each piece with one another, even though like certain things like these might, you know, go together as a pairing, this um, short sleeve might be a, a pairing with the short, you know, I think they want to be um, siblings, but um, I also want there to be hints of um, graphic elements on all of the pieces. Um, that really show um, just their, them as a family um, and a collection of, of apparel. So it's really rough. Like, like, for instance, when I make these little icons, I don't really mean that it's going to be like, like a circle with like an X in it. But like, I have like a rough idea. I do want it to be an icon, maybe an icon that um, uh, references like some, maybe like a Walkman, like, icon or something like something that's um, that's referential to that time but is obviously created from scratch and new so the idea is like really vague but it's there so that i can see like okay with this with this um selection i might be hitting all those points at the hero piece i have the the two-piece set and then i have like a few like louder pieces for for just like really covetable and then um sprinkle in 
um, on those, you know, louder pieces, um, so to speak, like, um, like applications and stuff that might be um, more expensive, just like kind of like loaded up. So I want opportunities within every collection to um, be accessible to people, um, but then also have like pieces that tie into that, um, that are kind of more special and like really unique. So that's the plan. That's like a rough Absolutely. And plan. I think that uh, it's amazing, Janet, that no matter how big of a pro you are, you are really starting from the backbone and really starting from scratch, from the sketches. And thank you so much for showing those. I think that everyone kind of hides these sort of roughs because they're not perfect by all means. And they're, you know, they're probably nowhere near where the final is going to go, but that's how work starts. And it's always good to plan. So I think that it's fantastic that you share the mood boards and, um, and your sketches. And also Richard was saying just before you show it, you could put famous quotes on clothing and let me know what you think about this. We don't have to do it, but if you wish for those of uh, you in the chat that know the song, maybe they can suggest a specific line of the lyric that yeah. really meant something so we can i would love that um, implement it so go in chat and if you do know the song and we're talking about a uh, peace of mind from laurie neal if there is any particular rhyme that is very meaningful for you on that song maybe we can have janet implementing into this amazing apparel connection and sorry to take just a second but um everyone is saying in the chat i think my dad is in the chat so my mom and dad are in the chat they all big supportive <laughs> of the live and i always uh send them some love they're in italy so i want to send them lots of love and thank you so much for, for joining us yeah my dad is actually like like over 17 is learning how to use uh, Photoshop through Adobe Live. So, so inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> also so right. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's keep going. So yeah, please let, let us know um, if you want a specific lyric. So I will let you know. Um, and remember, do, do you want lyrics from the song, correct? From a, Yeah, I do general. want to, to center it on the song um, for this one. Because of the mood. Google some lyrics. But uh, as we're talking about it, um, I... Kind of, I can show kind of my process with um, keeping those lyrics at bay, like the ones that um, stand out to me personally. And that's what I love so much about working in music is that it's so personal, your experience with it and um, a repetition of like a single word, like she says, free, 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 like over and over again can really um, have an impact um, on you in that moment. Um, I don't know if you can see Danielle see. pointing it out exactly, the free, free, free. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I see you in the chat. So yeah, so this is the page like before that where this is um, basically what I do whenever, I don't know if you can see, um, whenever I get a brief or obviously have like a personal brief for something is um, it's good to see it written out, especially if we're working with um, typography to get a sense of like the weight of certain words together, kind of like how, um, uh, how a word feels basically can kind of like help inform um, how you're going to typeset it and how you're going to illustrate it. So um, I'll just write it out and usually the ideas start to flow from there. It is important for me. I, I love working on my iPad, like, but it is important for me to start on pen and paper. I feel like I do think really um, freely and organically on paper. So um, this is like a just a quick free think. Like um, I've had uh, a bunch of um, kind of typographic little tricks I wanted to try before this anyhow so this is a great place to bring it in and so I wanted to try like um like what I feel when I think when I hear peace of mind I gotta find like my peace of mind like is it's very like it's a song and it's an album of struggle like um but wanting um and and knowing like that there is something to struggle for and so with the the type piece I really want it to be a, a contrast between two things and um, a sense of like the peeling back or and whatnot. So this is like when I what I draw when I'm like, will it work? I don't know. So, but I want to mm -hmm. try it. This is what I want to try later. Um, and then um, what we were talking about earlier is um, kind of like how we pick out lyrics. So as I listen, I'll like write down um, what lyrics really jump out to me and also what might feel strong um, on a piece of apparel because of course like that canvas is a very unique one. Um, and, um, you know, with experience, you can kind of um, pluck out what will really translate, you know, when you see somebody walking down the street and they're wearing this and that, like um, sometimes you don't want it to be so straightforward. Sometimes you do want something a bit more cryptic. So I've written down like um, 
please don't be mad at me. Like I have no identity. I, I love that line. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like it just, it's so quick that actually she doesn't repeat it that much, but it's, um, I feel like it is a very, it's like a quick dip into um, her vulnerable self. Um, so I wrote that down because I didn't want to forget. So yeah, I'll write down like a bunch of um, mm -hmm. lyrics that might may or might not go in. And then of course, if you guys have suggestions of what you- Antonia. Antonia Angeles were saying, oh, it's so possible. And I, mm -hmm. I, I really remember that. And um, yeah, I think that's also like really meaningful. But I mean, the entire song is super, super intense and meaningful. So, so intense. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> no, like I can't believe it. When I read it, I was like, oh my God, I need to like have a breather because it's, it's such, such an important song. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's very, very happy to be here. Are we going to be starting in uh, the desktop yes. iPad. Someone was asking if we're going to be working on iPad. We're going to be working on both because thanks to the beautiful and amazing power of the cloud document, we can just seamlessly jump between iPad and desktop. And Janet is going to show us how we do that. So what we're going to start with. So we're going to start in Illustrator. Well, we did start in Illustrator and now we're going to actually hop over to my iPad, hopefully seamlessly, but I promise in real life, it's very seamless. Um, if if Zoom ends up being a problem, this doesn't reflect on <laughs> me jumping to my iPad, but it's it's really, okay. So I have my iPad plugged in and I'm just gonna screen share my, And uh, we're gonna about to jump in the iPad. Let us know in the chat if you ever tried to use uh, Illustrator on the iPad yet. We done a stream a few weeks ago with the amazing Sarah Khan Lee just before um, the launch of Illustrator on the iPad. So let us know if you had a little bit of a sneaky peek, if you've downloaded already, if you had a play, how many of you have already had a play with uh, Illustrator on the iPad? I'm super curious here. Cool. Fantastic. Let's jump into the iPad here. Okay, so you just saw me make my deck on Illustrator um, desktop, um, which um, I find to be really fast to do there because I'm pulling stuff from Pinterest and whatnot anyway. And then um, now I can just, because I have it saved onto my um, iCloud documents, um, it's already ready for me on my, um, oh, you can see where my finger is, um, on my iPad. So I'll just open it up. Um, and this is the document we're looking at. So um, now I can just draw directly into the app, um, which is pretty cool. Isn't so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. I'm sorry, I'm getting into position. <laughs> oh, no worries. I can see you getting like getting your hands up, ready to go. I know, it just got really Let's tackle real. this. Okay, I, this is how I would actually work. Okay, so sitting on my feet. Um, <laughs> So I really want to tackle this first um, image that you saw me do up here, the, the peace of mind, because I feel like that's going to be like the foundation for everything, um, the rest of everything that I make. So like I have plans to just dial that out into like smaller scale icons, like um, I don't know, maybe I'll take the text out and do some cool illustrative stuff with it. I don't know, but I need to make sure that that part works first and then from there we'll just um, basically go with um, the flow of whatever is happening so I th think the that hero um, image I really want to be on the T because it's such a um, kind of universal item the t-shirt um, such like the humble um, item that just is Who so, doesn't want some swag, some t-shirt? <laughs> yeah, it's it's just so, it's such a, like, it's so humble, but it does so much. Like, historically, t-shirts have been um, such a, like, carrier of important information and also, like, a sign of, like, who, who you align with, what you belong to, and what message you want to send. So, anyway, um, I'm going to start with the type tool and... I, I had a font in mind. 
And in the meantime, mm -hmm. um, sorry, I just wanted to jump into a question. I believe uh, um, Stephen was saying that he had a play with an illustrator on the iPad, but struggles. Stephen, feel free to ask questions. We are here to help. We can explore um, the illustrator on the iPad with Janet. So if there is any particular tool that maybe you want to work it, I'm sure that uh, probably Janet is going to cover it. But again, we're here to take your questions and to help you out because illustrator on the iPad is super new. So uh, we just need to do a little practice. but. I'm sure you get comfortable with it after after a little bit. I think I had a, um, I don't know if you ever, you work with a, a Wacom tablet, Janet? No, I don't actually. Uh, but when I started, like for the first month, I was like, I cannot do this. I cannot use the pen. And then after two months, that's all I do. I basically <laughs> don't use a mouth anymore. So I just think that it's just take a little time to get used to the position and um, just to practice is everything. Practice is key. For sure, especially when I'm, you know, loaded with a lot of work, it's it's hard to take that like week to force yourself <laughs> to to learn like a new um, program. I'm super guilty of that for sure. Just kind of put it off. But I mean, once you get on it, it's just kind of worked into your workflow. And I think it's um, it's been really convenient so far, although you'll see that I'm I am slower on my um, my iPad. So now I've just typed out using the type tool. Um, peace of mind. Um, so Jenny, we have a general, I think more freelance question coming from Warola. Um, the question is when starting a clothing design company, how do you know what to base your company around? So I think this is more like of a branding question. Uh, should be based on your first initial graphic design or is that no wise? I mean, I think, um, so we were talking about like starting a clothing brand. I think that it's important to have a good think about what like you stand for what the story behind it is especially um since there's just such a saturation in the market of clothing brands you want to make sure that it's not just about you standing out but it's about you feeling good about the space that um you're in and um so what makes you different um in that respect because um it's so accessible for people to make clothing these days um so i'd really you know have like a think about um not just the branding but the story behind it and um, yeah, like what makes you special in that field. And uh, just uh, um, since since we're on topic, I do have a branding bundle with a lot of like foundation documents uh, about doing a little bit of research and questionnaires about yourself. So uh, hopefully we can have that link in the chat um, so you can go ahead and download Warola. Is there, there, there is something that I call brand platform that is more like a, a questionnaire that helps you reflect on what your, you know, what your values are, what you really want to communicate, and that can help you to get your ground together. I'm probably going to put it in chat and hopefully, oh, Cody Bear is already there sharing it. So thank you so much. So yeah, if you click on there, you get like a, a free branding bundle uh, that you can use when you develop your brand. Oh, look at that font. Awesome. That's amazing. Did you design that or is a, is a typeface? No, so it's a typeface it's called Edda. Um, there's a pro version as well. I might sub in one of the letters for, but I think it's a actually a if we look back at oh you can't see my laptop now but um if we look back at um that bob marley whalers um reference it's a very similar font um and that one has been used a lot on um streetwear in the past year i would say the one on the bob marley poster and so i found this great font that looks really similar to it but is a little bit less um uh overused i'll say so um Little Jenny's Joplin in mind there as well. Is that correct or? Mm -hmm. Am I, you know, Jenny's Joplin? No, that I, little I don't bit. think so. Well, I feel sorry. suddenly very old. <laughs> uh, Jenny's Joplin was an amazing singer. I yeah, believe yeah. in the <laughs> So um, I, I, I remember like an album or something. I don't know, maybe it's just a feel. Maybe it's not, it's not. Uh, you know, this same, is such but... a common, I actually don't know what her, I don't have an album cover that comes to mind when I think of Janis Joplin, but um, a lot of artists in a similar um, vein liked, liked fonts that look like this. It's kind of like a... Um, I'm heavily in Google. I'm, I'm, I'm on Google searching. It reminds <laughs> me of like the old, like the initial Paris, like uh, metropolitan uh, in the metro. Like the, oh, yeah. The, the original sign before they, I think they changed the, the type. That's so true. I think they were like in metal and like gold against green or like it's, something. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like Art Deco-y, but um, like so much character to it. Gorgeous. Yep. 
up. So kind of rearrange. So I want like the letters to weave into each other um, and kind of like hold each other um, and not just be like laying. Cause right now the, these, these parts you can see are like, um, they're, they're clear actually, you, you know, there's negative space between it. So I want to make it look like they're um, just solid, but with a stroke and holding each other. I hope that makes sense. Um, see, so see. Janet people are like Art Deco or Art Nouveau? <laughs> <laughs> Art Nouveau, Art Nouveau. Sorry, I, I usually, that's why I had to plan a little bit before I started this because um, I'm not super talented at uh, working while talking, <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to work on it. But I, I just knew like going into this, I would just like, some, don't you know, worry at all. You're, you're working and you don't know what you're even saying. Um, just take just your time. And, and, you know, if you just want to talk about maybe the tool that you're using and, you know, if you're just using the pencil tool, um, you, you know, we are more than happy to be just here witnessing how you use the app and to create this wonderful work. So a lot of people here are super new with uh, Illustrator on the iPad being the app mm -hmm. literally just being launched during the amazing Adobe Max. So just feel free to say, hey, I'm grabbing the pencil tool or the pen tool. And we're just here witnessing the magic happen. Yeah, so right now I am trying to create a shape, um, a single shape out of all these letters that I've now outlined. So I tapped them out and then I created outlines with them. Um, and now I want them to be one single vector image basically. Um, but first I wanna cut out like all the places that should be negative space. Um, and then I'm gonna um, use the Pathfinder tool. Um, I guess it's called combined shapes on iPad, but um, to kind of fuse them all together after I've like worked, worked it and um, it'll suddenly become a lot more clean after I combine all these shapes. But first I have to um, ungroup everything so that I can cut out. So you can see like when I tap, um, when I tap on each image, there's like a there's a little toolbar of like things that I can do. And so I can group them like here, you can see the group and I just ungrouped everything um, so that I can cut out of each individual shape. Um, also, Johnny, we have a question from Kian Ru Zong asking um, what type uh, what type did you use again? If you don't mind, please repeat. Yeah, so this is called um, EDDA and it's E-D-D-A. EDDA. EDDA. Fantastic, let me see if I can find and share it in the chat. That's something I really like about um, the combined shapes function on um, Illustrator for iPad is that you can actually see a preview. You can see here of like what it's going to look like um, um, after you complete the action. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm so accustomed to just the basic icons of like the little squares and what they'll do that I kind of like mindlessly click them, um, kind of trusting them to do what I want them to. But it's cool, pretty good, I think, for beginners as well to see um, what will happen like once you click on all these things you can see the preview of the A I just worked on and it's it's cut out now so I'm just going to keep working on um, cutting out the areas where oops I think this one needs to be um, ungrouped yeah um I'm yes sir I'm here searching the font <laughs> yeah I actually really like the the pro version of it. It's a little bit different, but um, I might swap out the A. <laughs> it's like a finicky thing, but I actually really like the A in this font. And so I'm gonna do this now first, but I do want to actually. Um, so the only one that I found that was in Font Shop. I don't know if that's where you got it from. I think it's also on my fonts. Um, okay. Oh yes. Com. Let's go and have a look. I love to geek out on typefaces, especially when they're so beautiful. You know, I, I always have to, I collect them and then I have to make a list, um, like analog. So I remember what I've just hauled for myself because I get really excited about getting them. And then, <laughs> yes. and then when I want to use it, I'm like, what was it called? It's always called something, well, in my opinion, it's always called something 
that I, I wouldn't have named it something odd. <laughs> so, <laughs> at least when I'm looking for it, I can never find. Um, have you ever <laughs> made fonts um, yourself? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I've, I've never made fonts for myself before. Um, but it's on the list. It's on the list of things that I want to do. There is an amazing plugin for Illustrator, uh, which I need to, I cannot remember on top of my mind, but I have it. So let me open Illustrator, see if I can take it out. But it's so easy. Like you literally draw the font um, in vectors and then you drag it as much as you drag uh, something into your libraries. Mm -hmm. You drag it and you just basically give it like a code. So this symbol, this shape. Is it is called a font, uh, font self? Uh, I need to go on a little because I say my I memory. have that bookmark. That's like my I have it. <laughs> the yeah. plan is to 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 use font self. But, so. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. If, as, as I can find it, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let me know because yeah, do... font font self font okay. self maker. Yeah. Super easy to use. Oh, why isn't this working? Let's see. Oh, okay. And uh, we have, sorry, Cody Bear sharing the link in the chat for Edda. So for all of you that are loving this beautiful font uh, that Janet is uh, using for her design, uh, uh, peace of mind, um, you, can, you have it there. You can just click and have a look um, if, you, if you dig to use it as well. Yeah, so if I, um, another really convenient thing about Illustrator on iPad is that I can hold, like press and hold this, uh, I don't know the official names for them, but it's the alt, the alternate touch. Is that the right name? Um, and it acts like when you click shift on your desktop. So mm -hmm. um, when I click shift, it's to move something um, either proportionally or tra transform it proportionally or move it side to side um, in on a straight plane. So that just helps me do that. So amazing how much you can do you, do you actually use a keyboard when you use your ipad or um you know i don't just because but maybe not for the best reason i don't just because my my ipad like tablet holder doesn't allow me to put the keyboard on it mm -hmm. um oh, yeah. but i think i would if if I, I could it's just that there's a ridge at the bottom and the key the oh, key okay. won't lay flat but I would say that like, if, if that was a more convenient option for me, I can see how that would be really beneficial. Cause, um, I strongly recommend it to, to anyone cause you literally use the same shortcut they use on desktop. So every single shortcut works also on Illustrator on the iPad. If you do have a keyboard, you can take advantage of it. So really speed up your workflow. Yes. I, I love keyboard shortcuts and if that's not part of like the workflow, I know I'd be working like 10 times slower. So, which I sort of am right now. Um, <laughs> but luckily Take your time. I won't You're be enjoying it. on iPad the whole time um, because there are some things that, um, some features that I hope will be available in the future, but there's some kind of critical things that I usually use in Illustrator that aren't yet available on um, the iPad. So until then we'll just hop back and forth, but it's, as you can see, it's like really easy. I'm going to, um, one, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that I'm reminding myself right now is to close <laughs> your cloud document that you're working on, on whatever mm -hmm. device you're not working on. So that doesn't get confused because it's saving to the same document. I'm just reminding myself of that because sometimes, sometimes that happens. And then, um, and then I end up with double, double versions of the file I'm working on. So and in the meantime, I was having a little Google because I wanted to use the correct name for the touch shortcuts. So I just mm -hmm. think that they're called uh, primary and secondary um, gestures. Oh, so okay. yeah, yeah. That that little circle really really helps so much to to expand the functionality of, of the touch gesture. So the primary and secondary touch shortcuts. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So they're kind of open. So Arka Prabha just joined us uh, not long ago and asking is asking first of all saying hello and then are we making type? Now we're making 
type, but also most importantly, we are creating a full line of uh, apparel, graphic apparel inspired by Laurie Neal, Peace of Mind, a uh, beautiful song. So first of all, thank you so much for joining us. If you just started, we're here with Janet. She's an amazing independent uh, graphic designer illustrator, and she's gonna share with us her workflow in both Illustrator on the iPad and Illustrator desktop while we create hopefully a full line in two days. That's a lot of work, but we look forward to see any, I mean, anything that we can get done, it would be amazing. I'm just excited to see your work just on type. So, <laughs> yeah. So this is like, this is like the kind of slow beginning part, but um, I'll say that my favorite part of designing a collection is when this hero piece really comes together. And then we can start thinking of all the ways that it can be translated into different parts of um, whether it becomes a patch or it becomes kind of like a um, like really oversized hit or something on one of the pieces. But um, this is, as I'm drawing, I'm usually um, beginning to think about um, how it can, it can become more than just this one piece in itself. So that's what I really love about designing apparel is that um, the graphics um, can kind of live a life of their own and keep going beyond just, you know, a, a 2D, one singular 2D. Um, they become alive for real. Shape, yeah. So they can, we can transform them and, um, and isn't it amazing then to see like people wearing your stuff and just like taking photo and really bringing in their environment and yeah it's always a nice surprise um for sure that's that's definitely like kind of the the clear like rewarding parts of the job so the next thing i want to do so i don't know if you remember from my sketch button what i was saying about it but i wanted to um bring in this element of contrast between like the um, this this first font we worked with and the second font that I want to be a pretty strong contrast but still lining up with the original font so Janet, that this... if you open like full the page because I think the page is kind of like folding up so if you just like keep it flat oh sure sorry yeah you can appreciate it your yeah perfect fantastic yeah, so, thank okay, you okay well now it's embarrassing because it's so big but this is like my rest. no no it's cool <laughs> it's this really my, perfect my rough thoughts to self like it makes sense to me i'm sure you know you guys do that too it makes sense to me and i'm explaining it how what i'm thinking when i'm drawing this out so these are kind of like it's going to be kind of cracks um and kind of like the peeling away of something and then this font is going to the second font is going to line up um with the first font um but be different so it kind of has like it's very two-dimensional still but there's a sense of um transformation and um just more interest because right now it's um it's okay but i think that it could really use that like extra like um almost like human touch i think that's what i like about these like single lines um that i can draw using the ipad so i'm going to use the apple pen or apple pencil obviously and then oh <laughs> um we have a question from mallory darks asking uh um so you're intertwining letters together. What is the technique that you're using? So maybe you can like tell us the different tools that you were using and mm -hmm. just how do yeah. You do so that? so I was so after I outlined all the type, it kind of becomes vector um, shapes that I can then really manipulate. So um, basically, I uh, after outlining it, I group them together and then. Um, I'm just taking little um, shapes as, as if you're like taking scissors and cutting out um, the parts that you want to get rid of. So certain places like right here, um, you know, the the there was a line coming down from this A, but I want to get rid of it. So it had the appearance that this, you know, this curve um, was actually going over the A. So there's parts where I want it to go under and parts where I want it to go over. And so predominantly I'm using my pen tool to create those shapes to cut out. And then I'm using the um i guess this this um i call i call it pathfinder because that's what it's called on illustrator mm -hmm. um but yeah so so pathfinder um to uh mainly to minus front and to um combine all so um i hope that makes sense 
Yes, I think that's amazing. And uh, in, in Illustrator, we also have the Shape Builder together with the Pathfinder. So um, it's amazing how can you actually use the same tools from desktop to um, iPad. I, I absolutely love that. That's 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 a very big, important tool. I think if you if you work in Illustrator, being able to combine. Yeah, that's that was big for me that it was very um, as somebody who's used Illustrator for so long and um, just honestly so much every day. Um, that hopping over to, you know, its own version on iPad would make sense to me and that the tools that I rely on for work every day um, are still there and work pretty similarly. So a lot of my work you'll see um, is, you know, I could spend kind of hours like tweaking it, but what's really important to me um, when I'm working on a project like this, that's like so all encompassing, there's going to be a lot going on. Um, what I want to prioritize first is like making sure that everything works the way that I um, plan for it to and it doesn't always so that's what that's why um, instead of tinkering like too much on these little pieces um, I really want to see the big picture and make sure that what I'm creating is actually gonna uh, not be a waste of time basically and actually you know be relevant to the final um, product so I could tinker on this more but for right now what's really important to me is that um, that little you know contrast um, you know play on words, I guess, play on typography, um, like will will work out the way that I imagine for it too. So I'm gonna do a few things now. I'm going to use my, um, this pencil tool um, to draw a stroke. Um, and so the stroke is gonna be like that cracking, the cracking line. And I actually want it to be really like human and just like not perfect. So, even later on, I'm going to be working with, um, sorry, can you hear the ambulances? <laughs> yes, don't worry at all. Once again, I live in New York, so. <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> and, and, and you're basically giving it like a very organic feel to it. So it doesn't have to be super straight. It can just be like, a, like if someone just went there and literally draw it. Yeah, I want it to be that way. And so even this to me is not um, organic enough, but it's okay because later on I can go back and add more um, anchor points and you'll see it picks right back up like when I start drawing again. So, um, And we have a question from, from Arka Baraba asking, is that a good idea to practice, practice some calligraphic strokes on paper to get a better understanding of working with type and then jump in digital medium in a later period? In my opinion, it is. I think that like um, from just my personal experience, like drawing um, fonts, um, lettering by hand and just doing it really analog just really gives you such a good education of how like those letters work. So um, I would say for, for practice purposes and just kind of for you to understand the basics um, of what goes into typography that works, um, you know, the the raw, more raw, the better. And so I think um, I'll always, you know, always rely on um, pencil and paper. Um, to give me the I'm best. giggling. I'm so sorry, but Jack of uh, uh, wrote artwork, art, artwork is so fire. I had to call the fire department. <laughs> That's so nice. Well, then I guess everybody in New York is like fire artwork because this is my sound all day. It's just, but I guess I like that perspective. Every time that happens, I could just be like. I was doubting myself, but it's hard to find <laughs> it must be it must be going all right. <laughs> so cool. Steve is saying so. that is one groovy font. Carol Perel is saying the pen tool with smoothing is fantastic in Adobe Illustrator for drawing. Yeah, I, I love that I can like it. I feel like it's pretty intuitive, but um, I love the option that I can go back and just keep tweaking it because just Regardless, I'm always going to want to tweak it a little bit and just make it feel. So right now I'm adding anchor, anchor points using the pen tool. Um, and then I can use my, um, what is this direct selection or what is this called? Um, yeah, my direct selection tool to move um, anchor points around. I do really want it to imitate, um, like I said, like a really hand-drawn vibe. And um, also keeping in mind, you know, when you're designing for apparel, there's um, 
how you print it and um, slash how you embroider and whatnot is going to be a big factor in how you plan out what these lines look like. And I do think that this is a kind of a perfect line quality to um, do like a single chain stitch um, that ties back to another um, top that has a same stitch. So I think because of the quality of the line, the having that like tactile stitch will actually make more sense than just doing like a water-based screen print or something on here. So we'll do the piece on of mind part with as a um, water-based print to keep it really simple. And then I really want to do this extra line here as um, something tactile. So probably that's, that's a question coming from me actually. Like I, I, at what stage do you think in materials when designing? Um, it depends. I think like if you're so for in, in this instance, um, since I am my own client, <laughs> which never happens, um, um, I decided really early because a the budget is not an issue. So um, I can kind of do whatever I want and I want to do something tactile. But in the case of like a typical, you know, um, working scenario, um, I mean, this is such a dull answer, but I mean, there's like margins and things. But um, I think it's always I, and I think a lot of graphic designers always want to throw in as much as we can, of course, within, um, you know, design intent and everything. Um, but cool. of course we want to add value to the garment in any way possible. So actually sort of, I'm happy with how this, this line works and keeping in mind, as I said, that, um, once this is applied in, um, you know, outside of the digital realm, um, the way that we're seeing it now, it's going to feel very different. And just by nature, there will be um, just a, you know, a, a texture um, and a like to topography to to the the line. So in chat, we're talking about the transparent film that has a paper-like texture. Do you use one of those on your iPad or do you mind? The, does it have a different feeling? Because Cornell in chat was saying that writing on paper is a completely different feel, but then uh, Cody Bear and Kathleen Illustrated um, have this paper film that you can put on top of your iPad screen just to give you a different like like feel with your pen do you use any of those tools? yes i think it's a great question um because i you know I, d I didn't start out drawing on a wacom tablet or anything i'm not somebody who um is just you know super skilled at drawing on glass um so when i started out and i got the recommendation for a paper like who makes um a, a screen cover like i think what you're talking about that has like mm -hmm. a bit of tooth to it um, I think it changed a lot for me, like um, being able to have the the screen actually grab um, what I'm doing. So you're, so, using yeah, it, so you're using it right now as well? Yep. So I would definitely, um, especially if you're intimidated by drawing on glass, um, I don't, honestly don't know who isn't <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> um, then I would highly recommend um, looking into paper like and like similar, um, yeah, like something with more tooth. And then a little bit of a rata courage here. We're gonna uh, say that Cody Bear doesn't use it. So Steve <laughs> was saying that Cody Bear uses so, um, Cody Bear, of course, in the chat, helping us out throughout this stream, sharing all these useful links. Then your website, my website, all this uh, amazing stuff. And she's saying that she actually doesn't have an iPad screen cover, and she doesn't mind this uh, slick iPad screen, but some artists use it, the paper-like covers, because it's texture. Yes. I mean, it's like whatever you're, I think if you are struggling or if you're feeling a little bit out of your um, your comfort zone as far as like the surface, then definitely try the paper like, but um, if you don't need it, then I can imagine that that's, that's also nice. <laughs> so right now I just duplicated the shape. Um, that I made, and this might this part might get a little confusing to explain, but I'll try my best. So I've duplicated. Um, oh my gosh, sorry. 
a paper, okay. a plastic bag just flew. I live, I don't live on the first floor, but I was scared me. That's the beauty of the life. We know everything up, we come in each other's lives. A huge plastic bag just like flew, like flying stories. Like, I think really... it's some like a uh, remaining from Halloween, like a little ghost <laughs> flying around. I know, I, I was like a shadow, like, oh my, okay, sorry. Yeah, this is real life. <laughs> so what I was trying to say is that I have duplicated the, you know, the organic line which, by the way, I plan to, when I pull into Illustrator, Illustri uh, on desktop, is there a separate name for this? So on desktop, um, there's uh, brush options that the iPad app doesn't have. So my plan is to apply those brush options to this line so that it gives some grittiness to the edges of the line. So it looks a little like overly smooth right now, but that's the plan. Okay, that's one thought. And then um, the thing that I'm working on now is duplicating that line. Peter, sorry, I just like Diego the so the chat because Peter Stevenson is saying plastic attack. <laughs> Dude, that was. I, think... <laughs> I was ready to be like, oh, sorry guys, I guess we have to, we have to again tomorrow because somebody is here. <laughs> but yeah, that was very. We're nice. safe. Yeah, everything is good. It's all good. <laughs> if anything happens to me, you know what happened. Just call somebody for me, please. But. At yes, we, we gotcha. We gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. how did you duplicate the shape? Can you show us, please? How do you... Um... Yes, so I basically, I selected it. And then, like I was saying, there's like these tools at the bottom. And once you select, or options rather. And um, so this one right here, the plus, will duplicate um, what I did. So I just undid it. It's already duplicated it. Um, and the reason that I did that is so that I could... <laughs> A, hide the, wow, this is not going to make sense. Maybe you should just watch me, but I'll tell you like more literally what I'm doing. Um, mm -hmm. So what I want to do is hide the parts. For those of you that kind of remember my sketch a little bit, um, I want to hide uh, the parts of this first font that, well, I want to be hidden. So I want to hide this, it can look, you know, whatever, it doesn't have to look perfect. Um, but so now it's like, you can see that those parts are hidden. Um, and what I'm gonna do is add another layer that has the new font that says the same thing, but I'm gonna do the reverse. I understand that that sounds really confusing, but- Oh, uh, don't worry, we visually can see that you makes working, sense. so we, <laughs> we can uh, see it uh, happening live, so. Um, as, as we say, pictures speak a thousand words. So oh, as you yeah. do it, it yeah, definitely makes sense. <laughs> and uh, we can um, see the type peeking through the path that you created. So from your sketches, it's taking life here and on the iPad. And we look forward to see your next steps. Yeah, so so one you know function that I use quite a bit is, um, again, in this little options bar, um, we have uh, this one that's basically it changes the stack, the stacking order so i can move this down because what i want is i want the black line to actually show um and i want this new kind of hiding layer to be underneath the black line mm -hmm. i'm very aware of how weird that sounds but basically i'm just moving this layer below the other layer and i can do Isn't that. that super cool that you can just like drag really something simply. through the layer without even yeah, accessing so the now, layer panel? Yeah, so cool. exactly. So now you can see the, the black line pop up and be clear um, once again. So I'm going to do the same thing with this second image. And now we have kind of like our first layer of our drawing. And so I'm going to sort of repeat the same steps that I just did, but just with a new font. Um, and instead of hiding, um, you know, this, this area that we just hid, we're going to actually use the area as a clipping mask for the new font. Oh, that sounds exciting. You know, it sounds so exciting. It's very basic. But <laughs> like, sometimes when I start to explain it, I'm like trying to talk extra slow and it still doesn't really make sense. But no, but I think that it's like it, it, it's hard to picture when you when you have to create all the like inversion and, you know, like it, it's amazing the way that you can plan it and then make it happen. So, yeah, that's I think that's just the the effect of being on Illustrator all day <laughs> um, <laughs> is I start thinking in, in like Illustrator 
terms i'm like solving problems and so i feel like i wish i could solve all my problems in life with with oh, sometimes shit. command z would be a very very useful oh, in life have you ever life. like like just command z like with your fingers like in the air like <laughs> in a real life yeah. yeah it happened when i broke my uh brand new iphone <laughs> screen yeah that's, i was like oh can one. i just do that <laughs> Just like, let's and go to a moment ago. Let's, yeah. just, let's just like, let's just do it right now. It was a yeah. second ago. It was full screen. <laughs> oh, yeah, if only, if only. There's some, there's some aspects of, of this I would definitely bring into real life if I could. Um, let's just move and leave an illustrator. That's uh, yeah. our avatar. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Adobe, let us know when that happens. And I'll, I will be <laughs> the first resident of that. So the second font... Why isn't it popping up? It's supposed to be Windsor. Second font I'm going to use. Do you have a favorite font list that you go to or like like that you often use or you're always uh, researching new ones? Kind of both, but I do always have, you know, like my, my varsity team of fonts, <laughs> I feel like. Um, oh, I don't know why this font's not showing up. Maybe I'll just, you know what? I can just do this in regular Illustrator give you a contrast okay yeah so I um I have like my like favorites but I think the favorites are because I I do um so much work in a certain area like um and so I'll need to reference um I think you know fonts are such a like great historical reference or a, a way to point to something so subtly um, or an era without you know saying anything so I have like certain fonts for the areas I tend to um pull from often and this one that I'm about to use which I think for some reason didn't sync onto my iPad but that's fine um, uh, is definitely one of my my top ones it's called um, Windsor and it's just got this kind of like um, it's like not too much personality but just enough um, that it just has like a very I think it, there's like an innocence to it but it's still dated in a way so it's not like pretentious in it being vintage okay so now I'm gonna just since there's a few things that I need from the desktop app I'm just gonna switch back to my uh illustrator on desktop and everything will be um you'll see like saved for me and ready so you're about to watch me work a little yes. bit faster well. as well so <laughs> I'm go back and Let's see. And we're just literally opening the same document. I think that that's so amazing that you can literally work within the same document and jump from an app. And it happened. I don't know if it happened to you, Johnny, but I was literally on the couch because uh, I enjoyed my food a couple of weeks ago and I was just working on the iPad. And then whenever I would just, you know, watch something, maybe on Netflix and then just move back into the desktop and finish off whatever I was doing on the couch. So yeah it's it's almost like it seems like so obvious like that we should be able to do that and yet this is kind of the first time i've experienced um being able to to be so seamless with it like i i usually like just airdrop everything can you see my my illustrator screen now we're gonna jump right into it fantastic and by the way big shout out at uh, jacob helping us here with all this amazing tech making all this transition happen. Thank you so much for helping us. Okay, um, can you see my screen, my Illustrator screen? Yes, yes, okay, perfect. absolutely. So you, you can see it. Right it's, into the desktop. Yeah, so it's exactly how we left it in our iPad. So um, I can, you know, refine some of these, you know, unnecessary anchor points. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to do a few of the things that um, my hope is that or Adobe will um, add in as a function, but I also understand that, you know. There is so fun. much more There's coming. So Let much. me tell you, there is so much more coming. This app has been, <laughs> I think, I believe five years in the making and it brought us a lot of the tools, but uh, I know the engineers are already sharpening their uh, tool set here for Illustrator on the iPad. So I, I think that's pretty impressive for the first take, but we're going to have much more. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, definitely. I mean, it's been a long time coming. Um, and there's just always going to be, I mean, I feel like designers are 
needy people and I feel like there's always going to be something that I immediately notice I'm like why doesn't it do that but at the same time already does like so much more than I mean I was able to imagine just a couple of years ago or less so so what I'm doing now is using that font that I was talking about this is the elongated version um Windsor you say that's yeah, the Windsor, name of this font name the font um I use it a lot um like I said, it kind of has this like innocence to it. Um, it looks a little bit more intense, you know, elongated, but um, for the purposes of this, you can see that it can match up potentially pretty nicely with the font underneath it so that there are joining points because what I want to happen is that here, um, I want them to line up with um, font number one, um, but I want, um, you know, the contrast to be that there, you know, this one is a different font A and that it's, uh, be like filled in versus the outlined version of the first font. So I'm just gonna um, create outlines and now I can start to, I don't need these, so I'll take these out and hopefully you can slowly start to see like where I'm going with this. Um, Super excited to see the final result. And Jotirmia has a question. Um, what print considerations should we keep in mind while designing graphics for an apparel collection? Um, so it depends. I think um, I'm going to try to work in some photo tees, maybe one photo tee later on into the collection. But for now, Illustrator um, is a really safe place to work because Prosec vectors, um, uh, you know, retain their quality no matter how much you size them up or down. So um, it's really a foolproof place to start. Um, other than that, it, uh, there's so many um, things that it depends on, like wh whether you're printing with spot colors or like what kind of um, material we're printing on can you can kind of inform um, the printer whoever is doing your production um, what uh, you know what the instructions are so it's it really is like a very tailored process depending on who you're working with as well um, to make sure that everything comes out perfect um, so you have like very structured briefs on do's and don'ts and limitations and materials and colors yeah, that's of course, like every production, um, like factory or whatever, like they all work a bit differently. Like some you kind of have to be like, just like super clear and say the same thing, like many times over in one document on some, if they just do one thing, so they know exactly what to do. But in any situation, I will always um, uh, have a, a separate document that um, has all the instructions on it, basically. Um, and to make sure that we have the same understanding of what we're doing. So we have so, a Mallory saying that can wait to see where you're going with this. Very interesting. It's like a puzzle. Yeah, me too. It's I can't wait as well. I feel like that's like what I love so much about I guess my work is that um, I create I create questions for myself and um, I create like scenarios that may not work out. Um, and the whole job is basically to to see if they'll work <laughs> so <laughs> i think if i was 100 percent confident um that it would work i think i'd be a little bit bored to be honest so right now we're just very excited we're very excited to see it I'm like taking shape i think it's super amazing because as you say like to explain it in words it can get complex and you know it's not that straightforward but making it happen is really when you're like wow mind blown like so that that's what you were thinking you know we can basically have a sneaky peek in your mind yeah so maybe it'll start to look a little bit more clear now um and mainly i'm glad that it's legible i think that's always like the at least to me it, it's, it's legible so what i've done is i've used that first um you know hand-drawn shape and use that to make a clipping mask for the fonts um, in my kind of second batch of fonts. So right now what I'm doing is editing that second layer of fonts to match up a bit more with the fonts underneath it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want, I want my intention to come through. I want people to understand like what I'm what I'm going for, which is that there is a change happening, um, that there is a breaking point, there's which is this line. 
Um, of course, you don't have to understand it that literally, but what I want is for that feeling to come across that there is um, like a same, same, but different <laughs> vibe about it. So this is what it looks like now. I'm just gonna make sure that I take out this shape. So there's a part I missed on my iPad. So I'm just gonna go back and it's like the same exact like shape, like Pathfinder situation. Um, oops, what's going on here? Okay, so. So exciting. This is vaguely what it looks like. I think I forgot to take this point. So everyone is on a little bit of a delay um, during the stream, but I have the privilege to see the little, you know, preview happening. So I'm like, yeah. I'm already like with my mouth open. <laughs> it's so oh no. Cool. <laughs> You're in for a treat. You're in for a treat. It's going to look so cool. Loving this. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I think like some, an, you know, something I love about the process of doing um, an apparel collection is um, kind of what I was saying earlier that like this doesn't have to be uh, to speak for itself entirely. Like this is gonna have supportive buddies to help tell the whole story. Um, so right now I have this, you know, quote unquote hero image. This is what I'm gonna, you know, take inspiration from. Um, but once it really uh, has supportive graphics, like it'll, the point will be really driven in. So right now it kind of looks like this. Um, and I feel like my point <laughs> is slowly coming across. So um, one more thing that I want to do is, let's see if I can grab this. So Timothy is asking, do you illustrate a chain stitch for your client? Um, typically no, because there'll be a, a certain way, depending on their machines, um, that they'll do it. So it would actually make it tougher for them if I illustrated it, but I would point out what it is. And there's been times where we have to specify like, oh, you know, this loop is too big or whatever. But at the end of the day, um, illustrating it out typically makes it tougher. Um, because So you kind of like, um, like save it on a separate layer because that's how you do usually like with print design if you have a special finishing exactly. like a foil. So it's just kind of a separate layer on its own and you just submit it to, to print as a as a separate item. Yeah, exactly. So I'll be like, oh, this layer is going to be, you know, this application or that application. So um, yeah, good question. Um, so now what I've done is, and, and the funny thing is I can also do this on um, my iPad, but since we're here, um, what I've done is I've again duplicated. So this line is going a long way for us. Um, I'm using it now as um, a path on which some type is going to go. So, I mean, this is just some more ipsum, but, um, you know, critical part of the lyric because right now I'm focusing on peace of mind and I do want that to be like the message, like kind of undiluted and not too long because the whole title is actually, I got to find uh, peace of mind. So I don't want to leave that completely out, but I want that to become a bit of a um, like a secondary element mm -hmm. and will help kind of add interest to um, to the, the, the this single artwork as well. I like to have like an element of discovery um, at some points, something where you're like, oh, there's like a little, little message for me like there. Um, it's always something to continue Just to peeling back. In the layers of yeah exactly so and sorry to interrupt you but i wanted to um uh, reply to one carlos because uh, uh, i can see a message today i just need help and thank you so much for the community this community is so amazing we help each other all the time can you please tell me your recommendation i want to use illustrator for vectorizing letters as well as different object um use on my laser so illustrator is definitely the app to use um maybe Janet, we can show how to uh, transform like a font into uh, outline into a shape. I know you've done it before, I think in 
into in the iPad, but maybe we can just show real quick how we transform a type into a shape so then it can be definitely used for a laser cutter. Yeah, definitely. I think this is um, perfect timing as well because I'm just I just typed this out. So with the type tool and I'll just add in like a couple more, I think, and then I'll, I'll transform those into um, into uh, outlines so that they don't have to, we don't have to worry about them being typefaces that might get lost down the line. So I'm gonna keep writing gotta find. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that right now. And I kind of want them to like sneak around and just, um, I mean, all of this, you know, it's kind of like, like poetic license kind of thing. Like for me, the reason why I'm doing this is I feel like there's like a feeling of journey. Um, discovery, um, self-discovery, like there's um, just a sense that um, something keeps going and not is not definitive. Even this final message is not definitive. So, um, you know, I mean, that's that's where I'm coming from, but you could also just be like, oh, that's fun. <laughs> like they're, they're traveling along this line. Um, so whatever it is, I like to usually have a personal reason. Yeah, yeah so- Everyone can see themselves as well in, in, in your work so they can kind of bring in their experience into it as well. Exactly, so it's however you take it, but the general feeling I, I hope is, is going to be consistent. Um, so so yeah, so back to your question. So now I've, I've typed out this this type and I'm going to go up and go up to the type and then create outlines. And now those are going to be vector shapes as opposed to types. So I can't edit the type anymore. Um, and now they're shapes just like everything else. Um, I do have the stroke on because I like that. I like like kind of like inkiness when I'm doing t-shirts, especially. I don't like them to look too new, or like crisp. <laughs> so there's a lot of different little techniques that I do to um, just add like grit and like bleeding edges to things. Um, it's really subtle. I don't, you know, I actually don't need everything to look goth or, you know, like um, too drippy, but <laughs> the feeling is that it's lived in and, and that there's, like a everybody loves like that soft t-shirt you know so. and if you can zoom in a little we because that font is a little tiny so we're like yes fantastic. sorry yeah yep yep thank so, you that's what that looks like and hopefully that's kind of the experience in real life too where you're like oh peace of mind and then you're like oh what, like what's going on there like <laughs> um so like layers to discover um and something that i do a lot, I feel a lot, a lot of things that I do on Illustrator are probably not like what necessarily a, like Adobe advisor would say is a standard thing to do, but it works for me. Um, so so um, for these t-shirts, um, this is not going to be print ready, but I really want to start mocking up because I'm anxious. Um, and if I were to make and we this- we got 10 minutes, so I was about exactly. to say, I didn't want to drop it on you, but I'm like, I we got it. 10 minutes. So, but uh, before we jump on the artist spotlight, we're going to do a review of these amazing artists, but then we can jump back and maybe finish off if there is anything that you feel um, that, you know, you just want to get done today before jumping into tomorrow. And by the way, I just let a note about what you say, like the beauty of these apps and coming from, you know, I, I do a lot of like uh, videos. I was speaking at Adobe Max about how to use the app. The beauty of the app is that everyone uses it in a different way. So I think that's the real freedom. The app is not doesn't give you any rules. You can get suggestion to work faster, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the best way for you. So I think that the more the app is flexible to adapt to your workflow, you know, that's where the success is for you to, to express yourself. Exactly. Well, that's very comforting too hear from you <laughs> I'm always like oh don't look over my shoulder I'm doing something weird but I promise it's I'll, I'll end me, up we right. learn <laughs> we learn from from you know by watching others we, everyone everyone learns by watching what others have done before and then implementing their own te techniques so I mean even even the engineer learn from our behaviors in, in the app so uh, as long as the app works for you, for you to express yourself. And those these are looking super hot, by the way. Loving them. Yay. <laughs> yeah, so I all I did just now was quickly just, I screenshotted it 
like you were saying, very informal because this is not my print ready file, but I want to screenshot it and then image trace it, that screenshot to turn that into kind of a new vector for me to start looking at all the colors together. Um, when I want to lay out kind of a, a line sheet, I want to see like oh, the colors make sense. So this is a quick way for me to get a sense of how that would feel across um, just like different color harmonies. So, and see if, you know, this this graphic is filling up the t-shirt the properly. So, but, it's, we got to keep this kind of original image intact so that we can come back and use elements of it for, like I was saying, and what I'm excited to do is kind of like dial out um, what we've made here um, and give it like little buddies. Um, so we'll create like different iterations of this. And everyone is loving the design. I can see Cornell saying cool design and also Peter saying nice. Anthony, great work. Antonia is saying, I'll buy that shirt. Darina, me too. Well, me too. We should do like an Adobe Live special, <laughs> special <laughs> line with Janet. So that looks so cool. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I hopefully will make something that I personally want to wear too. So, okay. So we actually yeah, started to goal. get demand now from the chat to buy the t shirt. <laughs> <Good. laughs> you have a, like an online uh, shop and Etsy, anything that you can link with your um with your work do you sell your work or you yeah just currently i don't i just i just do um so more recently I've done some um billy eilish merch and um the ariana grande merch and sean mendez so if you want to check out some of those I, some of my colleagues and i have been working on those um collections so i'm focused mainly on that now but thank you for we're yeah. looking forward to your collection. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this might be day one of my collection, so. Yes, <laughs> that's every got thing that everything falls in line with the peace of mind message there. Yeah, so exactly. So I just, I don't wanna, um, I know that we're we're getting tight on time now, but um, my main purpose with, with laying this out is just kind of to show you what that would begin to look like is the process of um, dialing out like that original design and how we can make because that was kind of like a big well a bigger it works in large scale like art um and this could be kind of like its own little um like badge element Oops. so like we would i could use this and and then we, we begin to basically make like something that could work as like a left chest hit or something. So that's kind of an example and in, um, of how this can keep being dialed out. This is not what it's gonna look like, but my plan is um, that's similar to what I've shown in my notebook is kind of to have hits like this and then one big back hit on the back that's um, gonna be more splashy and a little bit different. So the plan, the plan is, is we're going, we're on the road to- <laughs> So it's like a, as if you're seeing it from a window, uh, like as coming through. Yeah. Like, that's my, my vision. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel like hearing your vision is good because I can see like how it's coming across. But yeah, in general, yeah, like a feeling of like there's something beyond. And so that's why like there's a, it's obscured part of the peace of mind. Um, but there's something to like reach on the other side of this window or archway or whatever it is. So yeah super exciting tomorrow it's all gonna minutes. come together <laughs> we are four minutes uh before the artist spotlight i just want to like i don't know if you can see my t-shirt but like hints hints we got a bit of a superstar as well in the artist spotlight coming um so we definitely have one here working with janet so stay tuned because in about uh, four minutes we are about to jump into the artist spotlight reviewing some very special artists uh behance portfolio today so um if you want done it we can also recap a little bit of what we've done today with the workflow before mm -hmm. or if you want to keep working completely up to you whatever you you prefer and then maybe you say what we're going to be doing tomorrow okay yeah perfect because i'm i definitely want to i can't wait to kind of see all this come together so today um you saw me show you um, my mood boards start out. I always reference that throughout. And then um, I did a quick pencil sketch just to vaguely plan out the line. We started making um, a deck in Illustrator on desktop um, just that we had we would have blanks to fill in. And then after that, we moved 
to Illustrator for iPad and my file was ready for me there. I started to fill in that first um, deck uh, artboard that I already kind of set up for myself. Um, and then we just hop back onto Illustrator on desktop to start to refine and also to kind of zoom out and start thinking about the big picture again. So, so tomorrow the plan is to, I mean, you might be able to guess, is to kind of do a little bit more of what I was showing you here um, with dialing out the, the main image, um, but also doing some kind of, I wanna say crazier things, but just something um, really exciting for um, these, these kind of more expensive pieces. Um, and so tomorrow that's all gonna just come together um, and be kind of really strong as its own collection. Looks amazing. Also, I see that you've done like a mask in there as well. Yes. I mean, we got to look out for people and um, who doesn't like a matching set that is come complete with everything that you need. So hopefully you'll be able to do a quick um, mask as well. Yeah. Masks don't have to be boring, do they? Mm -mm. Yeah. This is a good message. So tomorrow well. we're going to tomorrow we're going to complete the set. Are we going to bring in any other color or? Yes, so um, there's a little bit of hint of that um, from uh, the mood board. Uh, you can see that I'm really liking these um, natural um, base colors, but with little um, happy, because I think, you know, the, so the song and the album are kind of sad. So like, um, but like, I do want to bring in light lightness and, um, and a little bit of just like hints of joy, but like in a slim way. So you can see the hints of that in um, the base colors I've chosen for, for the body colors for some of these pieces. I want to weave that into um, the graphics for uh, the rest of the collection. Fantastic. And I think that we are going to literally transition in topic as well, because we're talking about beautiful color, lively color, and uh, it's time to unveil in 10, 9, and we're going to unveil the, the artist spotlight of today. So Janet, uh, we're going to jump into my screen and uh, I would love for you to start comment. Usually when we, uh, when we have a, a spotlight, artist moment here on Mondays. Here it is, I know you all can see it now. Uh, the artist is Jade Purple Brown, which is the amazing artist uh, that has designed the splash screen for Illustrator 2021. And that's why I was like, hint, hint on my shirt. I don't know if you can actually uh, see it there, but uh, I'm actually wearing the new t-shirt for Adobe Illustrator 2021 created with the artwork created by the amazing Jade Purple Brown. You can go ahead and follow her on behance.net slash slash Jade Purple Brown. Let me see if I can zoom in into my little browser here so you can uh, uh, have a look. But I am sure that the uh, wonderful Cody Bear is going to place that in the chat. I just lost the chat for a second. So please bear with me. Here we are. Um, and I can see, I can see Richard and Mallory. Fairy to almost so amazing, amazing people that, that were loving your work, Janet. Everyone is a wonderful, wonderful comment about, about your work here in chat. Uh, fantastic. So um, let's jump back into the Jade Purple Brown um, artist spotlight so we can explore our work as i said usually um on the uh, monday we allow this time to really celebrate uh, or everyone all these amazing artists that are here um in uh, on behance and uh, as janet if you uh i don't know if you have your behance open or if you can see the page as well cody bear has placed the link in chat i would love if you can uh, tell us a little bit of what you think and i mean jade purple brown we're talking about color definitely color i can see also the expression being translated into a book into packaging into a rug into a mural i know you also do a uh, mural as well if i remember well janet you done a mural for adobe uh, at Porter in, in New York, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. So um, how do you feel about, do you want to pick any work in particular? We can zoom in and start exploring Jade Purple Brown, beautiful Behance portfolio. I mean, her use of color is just like so impressive and is immediately the thing that stands out. I've, I've come across her work in the past. Um, I mean, I, I would say more especially this year, I've seen, you know, so many people enjoying um, what she's been putting out. So I was happy to see, I mean, it was a surprise to me too that she was gonna be the artist spotlight today, but um, I just so admire her use of color and how, you know, I think like when when 
we talk about um, inundating an image with color, you can often just think, you know, just make it colorful, but the process of choosing um, the right tonalities is actually so difficult and takes a lot of um, just a like great intuition and um, just mm -hmm. a good understanding of like her, her shapes and how she, how she puts things together. Cause I think it all comes together so well. I think the shapes um, really uh, allow for that color to stand out and um, be effective. So I think it's really beautiful. So energetic, but at the same time, something that you were talking about the Windsor font, like, you know, when he's there and he's communicating, but at the same time, he's not getting in the way. So I think that's the beauty of the way that Jade, um, you know, picks her color palette is bright and gorgeous, but it's not overwhelming. Like, I think that that's a real magic that she has uh, in selecting her color palette. And uh, when I reply to Lucas in the chat, Lucas, I see you. Hello. Um, he would like some help. Please let me know. How can we help you? Um, and welcome here in the chat. We're here live. We're about to end today's stream. We have uh, uh, about 20 minutes left and we're going to be browsing inside Jade Purple Brown. A wonderful uh, Behance portfolio. We've been working with the amazing Janet on uh, some uh, typefaces created on Illustrator on the iPad and then Illustrator desktop in order to create a graphic for an apparel line. We're going to be keep working on that tomorrow, maybe a little bit more today as well. We can uh, just coming back into it. And uh, uh, But for now, do you have a specific work that you want to open so we can explore Janet? Yeah, I want to see maybe what um, she's, uh, I'm curious, like her own description too of, of the Words to Live By book. I've seen the image passed around and I haven't actually got a chance to look into the book. So but. the Words to Live By is a gorgeous book with 50 illustrated quotes and 50 by 50 amazing women. So that's so amazing. I love girls work, girls theme. <laughs> I'm a big, uh, big fan of... Um, of that but again we have uh, it looks like it's a full collection that also develops in cards and uh, is an illustration followed by also the typographical um, illustration there so i'm just going to scroll down let us know in the chat as well if you have any any particular um uh, work that you want to zoom in because i mean i'm a big fan of uh, jade so i'm happy to browse any other work and uh, this artist spotlight is exactly the time in which we can celebrate the way that we work as artists that each a very unique way and we absolutely love um, and cherish jade work and i can see a question in the chat for you janet jessica is asking what is your typical work day like for you um, well, currently, I mean, COVID year is a little bit different than, than a typical um, work day would be. But um, I, I, I basically, I mean, my, I live with my partner and he's like, he just draws all day on the couch. So in short, I am drawing all day, but I try to set up very personal goals for myself throughout the day too, so that these days don't really just kind of drag on and get like muddied but in general yeah I always get some kind of like brief in the morning or something or some update on something that I need to um, change or correct and then I work on that during the day much like I've shown you today actually just pulling in stuff to reference and then um, do you have a special coffee do you have a special like morning routine oh. or a walk or I've been trying to um, I've been trying hard to have um, I, I like to do yoga and so um, I do find my best days start with a little bit of um, nothing crazy, but some light yoga in the morning and um, like a bit of peace and then um, kind of slowly try to not chug coffee and then officially <laughs> accept that I need coffee around like two or three and then make lunch. I don't know. It's That's what I try to do at least. Everyone is loving jade color. So I just kind of left it on this uh, double spread when the whole world is silent, even one voice becomes powerful. Uh, from Malala Yousafzai, and I'm sorry if I'm butchered the name, I'm doing my best to pronounce it. Um, but uh, what do you think of this typeface? I know, I know that you are big on fonts as well, and I love the way the pink and the red work together, but definitely lo loving to have yeah. you inside on that. I, I love that it's it's um, it does its job really well. It's not you know trying to be anything 
um, to kind of show off in a typographic way on its own, but it's just kind of exciting enough that it delivers the message really well, which I think is um, the point of, of great typography. So I think this is really nice. I think um, I would love to be able to work with color in the way that she does. I feel like she really, you can tell um, that she has such confidence um, and is probably, I mean, I'm just assuming, I don't know personally, but I would just think, oh, this person probably has like a wonderful kind of bold um, personality to um, have this. We want to see her on Adobe Live, that's for sure. So we're going to put like a special request for Janet to come and join us to share our, our amazing techniques and to get to know her yeah. personally as well. And uh, I'm really loving the use of the icons here as well. Like, again, what I think that is really key throughout her pieces is the fact that there is a lot that in general may seem overwhelming, but it doesn't come across as overwhelming at all. So we have the um, hemisphere, the globe in the you know, substituting the O of the word world. And same, we have a substitution with the letter O in voice with a with another icon of mouth and kind of like the wave, um, uh, sound wave out of the exclamation mark using voice. So despite the fact that we have a lot of iconography coming through in within the topography, it's super legible and it doesn't feel overwhelming. It just feel like so considerate. Yeah, exactly. That's I think that's like a perfect add on like to what I said, like it's 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 like there's points of interest. Like if you want to keep looking, there's something to keep looking at. But what hits you first is the message, which I think is just super smart. And uh, we have a question for you. So I'm going to go like a little bit because I feel like I'm doing a double artist spotlight here because we get want to get to know you as well, Janet. And uh, uh, everyone is also curious to, since we have the wonderful opportunity to have you here, I can bounce from this beautiful jade work and also questions in the chat that are um, uh, asking to you. So Timothy is asking Janet, what magazines and online sources do you like to browse? Um about magazines i feel like my magazine taste is more like architecture or interior design um when i was younger I definitely juxtapose um and i still kind of reference reference juxtapose um for certain um illustration styles but um other than that i mean i do use behance i have a for this project specifically that we've been working on today that's like music centered there's this great resource um called Discogs, um, like a cog in the wheel, so discogs.com um, that has kind of like such an amazing like archive of um, like all the albums and any related kind of like tour um, art and just, um, I use it like every day, so. Isn't that where you can also buy vinyl? Yeah, you can, there's a ton. That's that what you, I do. <laughs> there's, a, there's a ton that you're supposed to use it for, but to be honest, I, I uh, use it a lot for, um, references and it doesn't have to you don't have to be working with music to use you know music as a music art as a reference because that actually uh, music art informed a lot of non-music things so um, I recommend uh, just being inspired by a lot of that so shouts to my my coworker who put me onto that and uh, talking about inspiration, how inspiring are those quotes from this amazing book from Jane so I love this illustration. Um, it's so cool. So flowers grow out of dark moments. I mean, I think the circle is closing here with peace of mind that we started the day with uh, uh, the song from Laurie Neal. And we're here towards the end of this stream with this amazing book illustrated by uh, Jade Purple Brown. And uh, uh, this is actually a quote from uh, Corita Kent, beautifully illustrated. And again, like wonderful use of typography. And you almost feel like the typography fit like, is knitted inside the illustration. Like if, just at a glance, they almost, they really feel like they belong together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an amazing quality. I feel like, again, like I keep emphasizing it. Like I know people say that for a lot of, it's an easy thing to say that um, the use of color is really smart, but um, I think it's just like really exceptional here, the way that she's um, made the dress, um, the negative space and um, allowed our eyes to fill in using just like the, the flower pattern and then of course like how using that floral um to inform the font um which is chosen like on the next page i think that's just really really it just works so well 
super beautiful. And I keep scrolling and I think we got to the end of this project. So um, we can probably zoom out and select another beautiful project. We got a rug, we got a mural. Um, in the chat, you can let me know which one you want to browse or you can pick, Janet. Oh, that's hard now. I didn't realize that was, of course, that's a, okay. We have to look at the rug. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. I was like, you know, hovering on the rug and I was like, which one do you want to pick? <laughs> uh, so, um, oh, I we have a seventies, of course. I was like, oh, that looks very like, that looks very seventies, like, seventies, yeah, <laughs> but like updated, but still fantastic. I love this photo and I love the way that she's dressing as well. Absolutely to match and so beautiful. Um, I don't know if you can buy this rug anywhere, but it's so, so gorgeous, uh, with the fluffy slippers as well. So comfy. Yeah. <laughs> I never rug. wear shoes so like that would be I will actually like can you imagine just to like walk on this rug where you feel like you're submerging yourself in a color palette like how calming and soothing that is I know I feel like I'm just like closing my eyes and voluntarily sort of like imagining what that would be like I also don't wear shoes at home so I must and start looking at this on my fear freezing off <laughs> and and all the waves I think they are super like so gorgeous like you got the waves uh, sticking out as well from and again you know that was my question that I, that's why I was asking you as well like at what stage you're really thinking materials I would love to ask uh, Jade like at what stage you decide that you're gonna have some elements uh you know that can be cut out outside you know like this really thinking outside the box literally, literally yeah thinking outside you know so that, that was my question to you as well you know if, if something that comes from the brief it's you saying you know what this one as to work like that. Um. Yeah, sometimes like since we're talking about warmth and being cold, um, sometimes the season can inform what you're making too, especially in um, the apparel industry, like often in like fall and winter. And, you know, I imagine that this rug would have been a great, you know, release for like the fall or winter time. Um, it like, it does inform you to choose like certain applications. So we do tend to use more like fluffy or <laughs> thick or like, because you don't want to have like a thick patch, you know, right across your chest or in your warmer areas um, during the summer. So that can be like, you know, a thing to inform that. So um, I wonder if that was a bit of the case for when she. And I right. love those slippers as well. They're so fluffy, <laughs> so, so comfy. Like oh, I just want to yeah. like snuggle in on that. It should be market. sold as a bundle. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, please. I buy. <laughs> and I can see everyone. Uh, um, Kari is saying, if that rug isn't for sale, it needs to be. No, it looks like it's available for purchase. You have a little link here uh, from uh, uh, Jade Purple Brown, behance.net uh, portfolio. So again, it's behance.net slash Jade Purple Brown. It's just their name. You'll be able to um, click on the available for purchase as well. Jade, we absolutely love your rug. We want it. We need it. Love I it. actually need a rug in my house. So I might just go and have a, <laughs> a little browse. Yeah, I might have to slide into our DM DMs and see what's up with uh, rug <laughs> yes. production. So we have a, a TikTok official mural as well, a dynamic 10 by 20 mural design for TikTok headquarters located in Los Angeles. So this is the sort of work um, that you do as well. So it's fantastic uh, to have a little bit of uh, like real insight of the work here on murals. I don't know if you... Uh, uh, know it or not but i come from a um, graffiti background so i used to work at the un and i used to uh, have like an office job uh, in communication and then at night i used to do graffiti in the streets so i needed to pick a career that kind of merged the visual aspect and the communication aspect you know because I, I always said either was going to get fired uh, or arrested <laughs> and neither of the two options <laughs> were really appealing so that's why i went into <laughs> graphic design Smart. but uh, you know please let us know more about uh, how do you achieve this fantastic um, a professional mural oh for me or yeah I mean uh, we can we can witness Jade work here but I mean since it's something that you do as well if you can share some of the workflow you'll be super happy as well yeah I think like uh, for murals it's like it's all getting everybody a part of the, the vision so you know I don't know how Jade works but I'm sure that you know mock-ups for especially for like a big company and selling in that idea, a big company like TikTok. Um, uh, I can only imagine, you know, how exciting those murals or the mock-ups of the murals must have looked um, initially and just kind of like 
letting people imagine how much that would make a difference in their daily space. Um, just how much color, like imagine if those walls are white, you know, and having that contrasted with um, what she probably mocked up in the beginning. Like, I'm sure that just was like a huge um, selling point. I know that a lot of muralists, um, or some of my friends, um, you know, got their start from making mock-ups in places where they weren't necessarily hired or wasn't a client, but it's just, I feel like it's a very visceral kind of like human um, excitement when you see like, oh, this is, you know, what it is and this is what it could be. So I feel like um, her murals um, especially are just so, I mean, you don't really have to say much about um, like how it would improve that space because we just see that it's um, just suddenly a happier, brighter, um, space that you would probably want to be around um, every day and, as opposed to and, your corporate. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, I, I completely agree because everything looks like it was like gray and black as well. So it definitely brightened the space up and it looks like they have like a reflective material uh, on top, just just uh, opposite on top of the of the mural and the light reflecting on the mural reflects like almost as if the, there is water in the ceiling so yeah. you can literally see the projection of the colors um coming on top of the roof as well which is i think super super cool and if you think about tiktok you think i think about you know everyone doing a little dance and i think that jade's colors waves and movement really gives you you know that feeling of movement and yes, happiness yeah. Yeah, totally. And like what you're saying about the the reflective, you know, surface, it's like it, something that's unique about murals is that when you're next to it or when you're with a friend and your friend is next to the wall, like that color just really actually reflects on your face. Like literally it, you can it actually affects the uh, quality of like the air <laughs> around <laughs> you. So it's like it, it does a, like a mural um, design is so much more than um, just seeing it on that surface, it really does like have such a big impact on um, how you see the people around you. It sounds metaphorical, but just literally, they might have yeah, a light on their face, and that's more fun than not. It becomes an experience. Yeah. And we have a question from Peter saying, "What font was that?" So we should ask Jade if Jade can please let us know which font are you using. We would love to know. Um, uh, I don't know on top of my mind here, and I don't know unless you have a, a super super amazing uh, uh, font library in your mind. <laughs> I don't know if you can recognize that that font or anything similar to it. I feel uh, like I that's... could find it. I actually just saw it. Ooh, and thinking fantastic. Like, oh. <laughs> That'll be so amazing. In the meantime, while you, while you look into it, I'm just going to scroll into, into other um, project here. And I also had a, probably another last question regarding uh, uh, murals. Like, do you use a projector? Do you use, I think that there is all this big myth of using or not using projectors or just dividing by squares. Like nobody really shows uh the dirty part of the work so i actually found the font because i i just I, oh let us know <laughs> let us know peter we actually found the font it's it's She's like what i was saying it's like, i i like to be able to access fonts i also like to know what it is like asap um so it's called it's not exciting name but the font is pretty nice it's called itc serif gothic that's as if they didn't want to make up a name for the font but that's what it's called so um, itc serif gothic, gothic. <laughs> I'm actually getting my little pencil here and taking a note. <laughs> That's so amazing, Janet. Thank you so much. And hopefully Cody Bear will be able to put a link in the chat. But I also see that we have um, how many minutes? Probably just a few minutes. I don't know how many minutes be before um, we have to say goodbye. But I think we can review at least another uh, project here. We have a Stacy Spita Chips. We have about three minutes. So um, what do you think, Janet? Do you want to give like a little little feedback and just literally celebrating this gorgeous packaging that uh, Jade has created before? Yeah, I remember. I'm, I'm curious what like the, the brief was for this because Stacy's like we all know Stacy's or I do. I eat a lot of that in college. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I would definitely like this would be an attention grabber in the aisle for sure because um, I think a lot of those, you know, things in the chip aisle are very recognizable, you know, we're reaching for, but this is like definitely something I would, you know, off the bat want to look into if I saw it walking down. So it's a limited edition bag. Yeah, it's just oh, really there. Well. She's like the ultimate, like, um, boss woman. Um, yes. I feel like she's, she's, everything she does really just 
um, is for the purpose of um, illuminating um, and I think you, strength of all women. Yeah, you really use that very amazing word before, which is confidence. Uh, that's a lot of confidence that comes through our work as well, which I think is key to build definitely with practice and experience. So, um, but I don't know if we have to run the schedule, uh, if we do have a schedule for today. Otherwise, uh, you can just look just below us and scroll on the little reel because I know that there is so much more amazing fun coming here at Adobe Live uh, just after us. I believe is, uh, if my memory works well, uh, Andrew Ockrattle with the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge coming just right after us and an amazing busy day uh, here at Adobe Live. But we're going to be back tomorrow. I can see so many other questions keep your questions write it down because tomorrow we're gonna be here back with our amazing uh, janet janet thank you so much for today and uh, we look forward to finish uh, the graphic tomorrow J janet was creating uh, some graphics for an apparel line so thank you so much and uh, we definitely look forward to finish that tomorrow thank you i can't wait for tomorrow so thank you so much everybody and we'll see you tomorrow same time here on adobe live thank you bye